நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் ப்ராட் யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் த தமிழ் வீடியோ ஆஃப் அ ரெனோண்ட் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் ஜோதிஷ் மகாகுரு ஆதித்ய குருஜி திஸ் இஸ் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் தீபா ஐம் கோயிங் டு ப்ரெசென்ட் யூ த இங்கிலீஷ் வேர்ஷன் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ ஐம் கோயிங் டு எக்ஸ்பிளைன் அபவுட் எஃபெக்ட் ஆஃப் மார்ஸ் இன் டுவெல் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் ஹவுசஸ் ஃபார் த நேட்டிவ் ஆஃப் ஜெமினை அசெண்டன்ட் ஐ வில் சே ஃபார் த நேட்டிவ் ஆஃப் ஜெமினை அசெண்டன்ட் த பிளானட் மார்ஸ் இஸ் நாட் அட் ஆல் நெசசரி and should not exist please observe the people who are natives of gemini ascendant or virgo ascendant and who have gone through dasha of mars it was such a pathetic condition for them for the native of gemini ascendant the major planetary period of mars should never happen Why is this such a crucial situation for the native of Gemini ascendant? Because Mars is not only the lord of 6th house, it is also a dead enemy to the ascendant lord Mercury. For some ascendants, the 6th lord will be a friendly planet to the ascendant lord. This is better than for the native of Gemini ascendant because Mars becomes sixth house lord and also a dead enemy to Mercury. Now let me explain the effects of Mars in the first house that is ascendant house. Mars should not reside in the ascendant house for the native of Gemini ascendant. When Mars resides in the ascendant house it will be in the 8th house to the 6th house. And what will be the effect of Mars? residing in ascendant since mars is the 6th house lord it will lead the native to suffer from chronic illness like diabetes from one point of view when 6th house lord resides in the 8th house to its own house it is good however the house where it resides is the ascendant house so it will deliver certain diseases to the native mars is a planet that signifies deaths the planet which signifies the disease is saturn mars should not reside in the ascendant house it will reduce confidence invoke anger and it will also reduce the intelligence of the native since it resides in the house of mercury it suppresses the intelligence of the native it suppresses intelligence and it delivers thoughtlessness and foolhardy nature having said this mars should not reside in the ascendant house it is not considered to be good since mars is the lord of 6th house the native himself will reflect a lot of negative character when mars resides in ascendant when mars resides in the house of mercury in gemini the native will have a lot of negative thoughts since mars is also the lord of 6th house the 6th house lord should not reside in the ascendant house in any natal chart this will invoke a lack of self confidence inferiority complex and negative thoughts it will also deliver certain thoughts that are not compatible with the age of the native now let me explain effect of mars in the second house which is cancer if only mars is subatwa the native can escape from bad effects If 6th house lord resides in 2nd house it is not considered to be good. Here Mars is debilitated and it has got only least subatwa when it resides in house of Cancer. Mars being the 6th house lord should not reside in the 2nd house at all. Since Mars gets debilitated it has the least pabatwa. Since Mars is the 6th house lord and deadly enemy to Mercury it should not reside in the 2nd house and it makes the house pabatwa 
In case of Mars's Subhatva, it can be good. When it has got Subhatva connection, for example, the connection of Venus or Jupiter, the native will earn his bread through significance of Mars. Though it is debilitated when it is Subhatva, definitely it will deliver benefits. When Mars is Subhatva by which it sheds all its bad rays, Native will earn very well through the significance of Mars. Though it is a dead enemy to Mercury, the Native will earn bread through significance of Mars such as sports, construction, real estate, medicine, etc. You have to distinguish between the house Karaka, Graha Karaka and Subhatva. Now let me explain the effects of Mars in the third house which is Leo. This is considered to be very auspicious but definitely Mars should not be Pabatva here. Mars should not be Pabatva in the third house. When Mars resides in the house of Leo it is considered to be good. And when Mars resides in Leo it will aspect the sixth house by its fourth aspect. However, when Mars which resides in the third house is aspected by Saturn, it will lead to Karako Bhavanasti. The only antidote for Karako Bhavanasti is Subhatva. You might ask a question, Mars which is the significator of the brother, residing in the third house which indicates brotherhood, will it invoke Karako Bhavanasti? When there is Subhatva connection to the third house, it will nullify Karako Bhavanasti. When a malafic connection is there and Mars resides in the third house, then definitely there will be a loss due to brother or there will be a loss of a brother. There might be danger to the life of younger brother or younger sister or there will be separation of the native from the younger brother or younger sister or there will be a quarrel between native and younger sibling where each other lives separately without connection. When there is a strong separation between the native and younger sibling, there will be no loss of life of the younger sibling. If Mars resides in the third house in the house of Leo with Subhatva, it is an added benefit. Since Mars resides in one of the Upachayasthana, the third house, it is considered to be good. It will deliver benefits when there is no malafic connection such as Saturn, Rahu or Ketu. Now let me explain the effects of Mars in the fourth house which is Virgo. Here Mars loses its Digbala that is directional strength and it also resides in another own house of the ascendant. This is a better position. It will be in the 11th house to Scorpio. Why do I say that this position is better? Any guesses? Because this is another house of ascendant lord. When Mars resides in house of Mercury, definitely it will not be comfortable However, a malafic is residing in the quadrant house. What will be the negative effect when Mars resides in the fourth house? It will affect the status of the mother. If Saturn sits in the fourth house, it will affect 100% the status of the mother. The same effects will be delivered by Rahu as well. When Rahu resides in 4th house, it will affect the mother's status 100%. When Mars resides in the 4th house, it will affect 75% of the mother's status. When you understand the basic character of the planets, it will be helpful in predictions. Imagine Mars is residing in the 4th house, it lost its Digbala and it resides in another house of the Ascendant Lord. And in addition to this, imagine when Mercury is residing in Gemini, then this position of Mars is good. 
In all aspects, when the dispositor, that is house lord, is strong, it is considered to be good. When a planet resides in the house, whose house lord is exalted, or in its own house, then it will deliver a benefit. When Mercury resides in Gemini house itself, in its own house status, then Mars has lost its strength when it resides in another own house of Mercury. I often say the 6th house lord or 8th house lord should have definitely lesser strength than the ascendant lord. The house lords who are responsible for delivering diseases, accidents, losses should be weaker than the ascendant lord. Therefore, when Mars resides in the 4th house, based on the points that a malefic residing in the quadrant house and the 6th house lord residing in another own house of the ascendant lord, this will affect the status of the mother and it will deliver benefits to the native. Based on strength of Mercury, you have to gauge further. So this is sort of okay position. Now let me explain the effects of Mars in 5th house. Mars should not reside in Putrasthana. When Mars resides in Libra, it has got little Subhatva. Since Mars will reside in the 12th house to its own house Scorpio, which is the 6th house to the ascendant, it is good. This will spoil the children of the native and it will strengthen its another house which is 11th house Aries by its 7th aspect. When Mars resides in the houses of Jupiter or Venus, it will tend to behave softly. Now let me explain the effects of Mars in the 6th house which is Scorpio. When Mars is alone in Scorpio, it is not considered to be good. And the malefic connection such as Saturn or Rahu will worsen this position. For the native of Gemini Ascendant, the 6th house should not be strong. It is better when Mars is connected with the 6th house. In case of this connection exists, Mars should be Subhatva. It is considered to be the antidote. Well, let us see the effects of Mars in the house of Sagittarius, which is the 7th house. When Mars resides in 7th house, it will not deliver much worse effects. It might deliver a delayed marriage to the native. When Mars resides in the house of Jupiter or the house of Venus, it will curb its tail and it will tend to behave softly. And 7th house is another quadrant. Therefore, Mars can reside in the 7th quadrant and whatever I explained for the 4th house applies to the 7th house and 10th house as well. Mars will definitely deliver certain benefits while it resides in 4th or 7th or 10th house which are quadrant houses. It will not deliver very bad effects. This will deliver a spouse who is not aggressive indeed. Now let me explain the effects of Mars in 8th house which is Capricorn. Here Mars gets exalted and this will affect the longevity of the person. This will reduce 40% of the longevity of the native since it is exalted. To make the best predictions about longevity, you have to check the house lord Saturn, the strength of the ascendant lord. Saturn is also the natural significator of longevity. Based on all these factors, you have to make further predictions. The sixth house lord should not gain the strength of exaltation status. This is not considered to be good. Anyway, Subhatva is the antidote for this position. The aspect of Jupiter or the conjunction of Venus can change the situation or even a waxing moon can be in conjunction with Mars which will change the negative effects. Now let me explain the effects of Mars in the ninth house which is Aquarius. This is not considered to be good. 
This will affect the status of the father. Here Mars resides in the house of Saturn. To know the status of the father, you have to check the son, which is the natural significator of the father. And also the ninth house lord, which is Saturn. A malefic should not reside in the trine house. And the sixth house lord is in the quadrant house to its own house Scorpio. And it resides in the ninth house for the native of Gemini ascendant. This is not considered to be good. To sum up, Mars here will not deliver benefits. Now let me explain the effects of Mars in the 10th house which is Pisces. This will deliver extreme benefits. This is considered to be great yoga. The Dasama Angaraga that is Mars in the 10th house which has got directional strength as well will deliver extreme benefits as it gains Subhatva residing in the house of Jupiter. In case Mars is Subhatva and gets connected to Ascendant or Ascendant Lord, then this native will inherently have great interest in the medical field. I observed this sort of planetary position in the natal charts of the people who are in medical field. You take the natal chart of a doctor and try to predict this. When Mars is in 10th house and it has got connection with either Rashi or Ascendant, definitely the native will be working in the medical field, will work as a doctor. You will be amazed by the factors that I explain on my YouTube videos. This applies 100% correct. Whatever astrological system you follow, it doesn't matter at all. Whether you follow KP system or any other system, these points will apply valid in the natal chart. Why do I say these uh, with such a strong determination? Because I have observed the natal charts of many doctors where my rule applies 100% correctly. Once a master session was uh, organized by Astrovision. Uh, there was a doctor who is native of uh, Gemini Ascendant who ignorantly questioned why my concept of Subhatva of Mars uh, does not apply in his natal chart to become a doctor. This video is still there in my premium videos. When I asked about his natal chart, he told me that Mars resides in 10th house and is Gemini Ascendant. Everybody laughed at him because he was sitting in the front row and he did not even realize the basic concept of Subhatva. Since he is native of Gemini Ascendant and his Mercury is strong, he was also interested in astrology and Mars is in 10th house residing in Pisces which is house of Jupiter thus gaining Subhatva and in addition to this Mars has gained Digbala as well. And based on my concept that when Mars is Subhatva in the 10th house to the Rashi or Ascendant, one can become a doctor. I explained this in a master session and this event happened during the master session. Therefore, when Mars is Subhatva in the 10th house, based on Dasama Angaraga, which is considered to be a very auspicious one, the profession will be good and Mars will not affect the profession in any way based on this planetary position. As per Bhavad Bhavam, though Mars resides in the 12th house to the 11th house, it will deliver benefits. Added benefits will be delivered when Mars resides in 10th house and has got connection of Venus or Jupiter. Then the native will shine in the medical field or in any field which is signified by Mars. Suppose in any natal chart you see the planetary position does not support the person to be a doctor but still he has completed the medicine course then the native will not be able to earn through the profession of a doctor. Subhatva indicates the income of the native. In case Leo is the 10th house of a person and Mars resides in it and gets connected to the Ascendant or Ascendant Lord, the native will be a doctor, but he will be working for a salary of just 15,000 rupees. 
After completing such valuable graduation, this native will be working for almost 15,000 rupees, which is very less, right? Subhatva of the planet indicates the level of income or increased income that a person can earn by his profession. If the planet does not have any Subhatva, still the person will be a doctor, but his fees will be like a minimum of even 5 rupees or 10 rupees per patient and he will be working in a hospital for a monthly salary that to a less salary. The native will not be even a government doctor. Try to apply these points in the natal chart you see. Subhatva indicates the level of income that one can earn in their profession. Now let me explain the effects of Mars in the 11th house which is Aries. As per Bhavad Bhavam, the 6th house lord is in the 6th house to its own house Scorpio. This is considered to be good. Though it is in its own house in Aries, it is in the 11th house to the ascendant. The 11th house to the ascendant is an inauspicious house. And Mars while residing in Aries will be in the 6th house to such an inauspicious house Scorpio. The inauspicious house Scorpio for Gemini Ascendant is responsible for delivering deaths and diseases. Based on this, Mars will not deliver very bad effects. Based on the Subhatva of the Mars for the native of Gemini Ascendant, it will deliver benefits. Now, let me explain the effects of Mars in 12th house to the Ascendant, which is Taurus. The 6th house Lord should not reside in the 12th house. Though this is the house of Venus, where Mars gains Subhatva, it will get connected to 6th house by its 7th aspect. What will happen? During Dasha of Mars, Mars will deliver deaths, diseases and litigation. Therefore, Mars should not reside in the 12th house. This is all about the effects of Mars in different houses for the native of Gemini Ascendant. Well, please write your feedback and suggestions to astro.writeus at gmail.com and the link of all the English videos playlist is given in the description box. Thank you.